Hi everyone, in this video, I will share with you step by step the best strategy to answer any OSMLE -like question. This method will save you a lot of time during the exam, especially when dealing with long vignettes, and it will also help you avoid common traps. If you start practicing this approach now, it will benefit you whether you are just beginning your step journey or you are already advanced and close to your exam. So, Let's go. Before we dive into strategies, let's first understand the structure of a typical USMLE question. Most vignettes follow a sequence. Intro gives you the patient's age, sex, and main complaint. History adds details about the complaint, past medical history, medications, and family history. Vitals, which is usually normal unless they are relevant. Physical exam can be normal or may highlight key findings. Labs or diagnostics, sometimes they present, sometimes not. Lead in, this is the actual question being asked like, what is the most likely diagnosis? Or which mechanism best explains this finding? Answer option, usually five, with some choices that sound correct, but test you if you know the subtle difference between them. Not every question will have all these parts, but most will follow this flow. Recognizing this sequence help you quickly organize the information instead of getting lost in the details. Okay, now let's apply that sequence to a real style simply step one question. A 42 year old woman comes in with one year of irregular vaginal bleeding and painful cramps. That's the intro. We are told here bleeding used to be regular but now lasts 10 to 12 days with severe pain and painkillers don't help. She also has a family history of hysterectomy for abnormal bleeding. That's the history. Her body mass index is 28 and vitals are normal. That's the vitals. On exam, her uterus is enlarged and irregular with regularity. That's the physical exam. No labs are given here because they are not necessary. Finally, the lead in. Which of the following is the most likely cause of her symptoms? followed by the answered choices as we see here. By labeling each part, you see how the vignette flow and which information is actually important for solving the question. And we will return to this again. Now, let's talk about how to actually solve these questions step by step. Step 1. Read the lead-in first. Always begin with the last line so you know exactly what is being asked. And sometimes the lead-in alone gives away the answer. For example, if the question asks which of the following making this patient feel and in between answers there is interlocking one. You can answer without even reading the vignette. Step 2. Look quickly at the answer choices. This frames your thinking. You can immediately take if the question is about diagnosis, mechanism, or treatment. Step 3. Read the vignette with purpose. Focus on the intro and demographics. Age, sex, parity, and the chief complaint. Then go through the history, vitals, and exam. But only pick up the details that help with the lead -in and ignore distractions. Use any labs or diagnostics if they are provided. Not every question has them, but if they are there, they are usually important. Step 4. Return to the lead -in and predict the answer. Before looking again at the options, try to form your own answer. Step 5. Apply elimination. Cross out answer choices that clearly don't fit the findings until the best one remains. Step 6 and 7. Manage your time and trust your instinct. Don't get stuck more than 90 seconds. If you are unsure, pick the best option and move on. And usually, your first logical choice is correct. Change it only if new evidence in the vignette proves otherwise. Practicing this flow will save you time, help you focus, and stop you from falling into traps. Let's apply the checklist now to a really simple style question. A 42-year-old woman, malgravid, presents to the clinic due to 12 months history of irregular heavy menstrual bleeding combined by worsening pelvic pain. Previously, her cycles were every 28 days, lasted 3 days, and were minimally painful. Over the past year, cycles now occur every 21 to 28 days, lasting up to 10 to 12 days, with severe cramps. Over-the-counter analgesics have provided little relief and a lot of blah blah blah. Now, notice this vignette is long. If you just read it from top to bottom, you will probably waste time and need to reread. That's exactly why we use our strategy. So now, let's apply our strategy. Step 1. Read the last line first. The question asks, what is the most likely cause of her symptoms? So, 
I know they want the diagnosis. Step two, skim the answer choices. I see both uterine and ovarian causes. That frames my thinking. Step three, read the vignette to his Key demographics, 42 years old, null gravid, abnormal bleeding, severe cramps, the critical finding uterus is enlarged, regular, and nodular. Step 4. Predict the answer. That battle is a classic for leomyomas or fibroids. So, my prediction is the answer choice A. But let's say I don't know that a regular nodular uterus is bizarre. In that case, I go back to the checklist and use elimination, starting from bottom. Choice E. Ovarian stromal proliferation, which indicates ovarian tumor, not uterine enlarged, so I will eliminate. Choice D, which indicates functional ovarian cysts, which will have adnexal masses, not irregular uterus, so I will eliminate. Choice C, which indicates endometriosis, which will have painful cycles, infertility, but uterus size is usually normal, so I will eliminate. Choice B, which indicates adenomyosis which will have heavy painful bleeding, but uterus is usually uniformly enlarged and pudgy, not irregular and nodular, so I will eliminate. That leaves choice A, benign monoclonal smooth muscle tumors, which indicates pheomyomas or fibroids. Two fine reminders. Don't get stuck more than 90 seconds on a single question. Keep moving, and trust your first instinct. Most of the time, your gut feeling is correct. Unless new information proves otherwise. So, now to wrap up, here are the key takeaways. Always start with the rhythm before you read the vignette. Try to predict the answer from the stem. Eliminate aggressively because MPME loves this track. Most of the time, you will be left debating between two close choices. Use the subtle clues to guide you. And finally, don't waste your time overthinking. Pick the best answer and move on. And yeah. That's it for today's strategy. Practice this flow with every question and you will get faster and more confident on exam day. If you found this helpful, subscribe to the channel and follow me on Telegram and Twitter. Links are in the description. Drop a comment with what topic you want next and good luck with your